All right, everybody. Well, hey, welcome to Note Night in America. Hope everybody else is doing well out there. Uh, first Monday of February. We got an extra day this month. We got it's a leap year. Hey, but anyway, welcome here to everybody. Excited to have you guys here. We're gonna dive pretty much straight into the uh, the content tonight. We're all here about finding deals. Uh, my phone has been ringing off the hook with people like, "Hey, how do I find deals? How am I? I'm, I'm having a hard time." finding things from the old places that I used to find deals at. Can you help me, Scott? Can you help me find where to look for this stuff? And so um, we, no wonder that we had such a huge uh, RSVP list for tonight. I'm sure we'll have a, a big replay on uh, this uh, this video as well, too, for you guys that are listening out there. But we've got a lot of stuff to cover tonight, so I want to dive straight into this here. Once again, we do these Note Night in Americas pretty regularly on Monday nights, uh, trying to do them a little bit more regularly than we did last year. Um, Monday night, 7 p.m. Central. As always, they are recorded. Uh, you can catch them on the Note Night in America podcast as well out there, as long as and also at YouTube on our WeCloseNotes.tv channel. Um, love for you to go there and subscribe. Help us get past it. Actually, we exceeded 3,000 subscribers uh, first week of January, so we're excited them. Excited about that as well, too. But once again, guys, um, we are recording this. I do see the red light, which is good. And uh, we want you guys to ask questions and make sure that you guys are paying attention for everything. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I've uh, had some stuff happen in the last couple of weeks. Kind of interesting health-wise. Somebody noticed four eyes. Yeah, I have to get glasses. Stigmatism is finally kicking in uh, along with high blood pressure. And uh, doctor kind of scared me uh, a little bit uh, and stuff that I'm taking care of. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later on. But anyway. Uh, it's been an interesting couple of weeks health-wise. So anyway, uh, let's dive into the information. Any questions about uh, that stuff? If you're new to the, the Note Night in America, we are honored to have you. We always have a variety of real estate investors, note investors, people looking to invest in one form or fashion, uh, people that heard me speak across the country. We welcome you here as well, too. So, And then, of course, listeners to the Note Closer Show podcast, thank you so much for listening as well, Note Nation. So anyway, Diving in tonight, finding deals. So take a piece of paper and a pen out or pull out your smartphone and start taking some notes on this stuff. It's important to what we're going to cover here um, because some of it's going to sound like it's a, a rehash of things we've talked about on a regular basis. And that's not the case. Um, with a new year, new decade, and where the market is at, you've really got to change some things. And um, from conversations with so many people out there, our vendors, our investors, I know that a lot of people are kind of hurting. It's tight for a lot of people out there. It's getting, people are struggling out there. And I'm not just talking note investors, I'm talking f fix and flippers, traditional entrepreneurs out there are struggling. And so there's some things tonight that I really want to focus on that are a big, it's, are a big bang for your buck versus other things that people are doing or continuing to do that I think are just a big waste of freaking time and money. Okay. I value your guys time. I'm honored. You're spending an hour with me here tonight and I want to make sure and deliver as much content as I can for you going forward as always. But anyway, finding deals here. So new year equals new focus. You know, we've talked about, you know, looking for deals from mortgage bankers, servicing companies, secondary marketing department, special assets managers, uh, whole loan sales departments, loan sale platforms, note conferences, private sellers like you and me. All right. And what's unfortunate is most people are doing it wrong. And some of these things just don't freaking work anymore to find new deals. They just don't work unless, I mean, it might work once in a blue moon, but we all want more than one note every blue moon. I think we can all agree to that. Right, everybody? So let's talk about how the best ways to approach these are and some of the things that you should be doing and you shouldn't be doing. So let's first of all talk about what's not working, okay? And this is a broken machine. And I think a, I've seen a lot of investors that keep replicating what they did two years ago, all right? What they did two years ago expecting to work today. And that's not the case. With the market being where it's at, with numbers going up like this, uh, yes, we've had tightened numbers when it comes to note investing. They're not just laying around like pennies on the ground. They're not just laying down for you to buy. You have to actually work this like another business. And it's not as extreme as the fix and flip or the wholesale market where you've got to drop thousands and thousands of postcards or bandit signs or yell letters or door knocking where you can get shot at. I mean, come on, man. You don't want that. I've had that happen a couple of times. 
So what's not working? My biggest thing is that I'm big believer note conferences aren't working. Why? Well, they're getting smaller and smaller attendance. People don't want to fly out to see the same lineup, okay, that they saw last year. And that's the thing with a small industry. You see conferences, and we've looked at this too as well with Note Camp, is that we have to change things up. We have to get creative to get the numbers. We have to provide value. Listening to the same, uh, same person speak over and over again is not valuable. I don't want to fly across the country to hear such and such speak when I've heard them all the time, okay? I also see conferences that are directed directly towards the person putting the conference on. That's the wrong thing. If you're putting a conference on, you shouldn't be just a money grab for vendors and tickets. You should actually provide something valuable to the people that are taking time out of their weekend, paying money and flying out there. But honestly, the numbers are down across the country. I have turned down five conference speaking events when it comes to the note and real estate game. And people ask me, why, Scott, why are you turning down? I'm like, well, first and foremost, there's nothing new. And there's nothing new. When you look at the lineup, I'm like, it's the same old lineup that was speaking three months ago at this other event. The same lineup that was speaking a year ago at your same event. And I'm like, what is going on? So numbers are down across the country. I've had several conferences. Hey, Scott, we really like to have you come and help market our event. I'm like, I'm not going to pimp out my database just so you can sell a few more seats to your crappy event. Okay? And their numbers are down across the country, across all sorts of seminars out there. So maybe you need to stop going to those things and spending money. And as I say, same speakers, oh, it could make me yawn. I don't need to hear the same person speak over twice. So here's another thing. Loan sale platforms, what's not working? Now, don't get me wrong. I think loan sale platforms are a great place for you to sell if you've got some because there's so many going to them, but they're picked over assets, okay? It's overpriced, picked over. You know, we had the guys on paper stack a few months back. I think they've got a great platform. I think it's a great way to sell an asset. I don't think it's a great place to buy. When you look, I just looked at their portal just a few minutes ago. And they got 123 notes on there, seconds, first, no CFDs. And some of the things I see on there, I'm like, that's great. I just think it's overpriced, okay? It's decent for selling, but not for buying, all right? And this goes the same thing across the board. If I hear somebody else tell me that FCI exchange was so good, I'm going to sit there and strangle them. There's one of them, oh, yeah, FCI exchange is great. And I'm like, you bought how many notes over how many years? Oh, I bought like four over five years. I'm like, ooh, that's not a good platform. And I'm fired up tonight. I'm getting fired up just thinking about it, everybody. Okay? It's not, the loan sale platforms, no offense, are going to be the most overpriced assets, okay, unless it's exclusive. The closer you can get, the better. Like I said before, it's great for selling because you got all these suckers out there that want to come there to buy a note, and they will overpay for a note. That's not the right thing. I've had to talk three people out of buying notes in the last 48 hours, two business days, because they were overpaying or crap, okay? Don't do it. Now, mortgage bankers. Mortgage bankers, we used to talk a lot about, hey, reaching out to the mortgage bankers, reaching out, connecting with them, reaching out because they're going to have some stuff that they would take back. Yeah, that's the case usually, but really, um, uh, hang on, I'm sorry here. So usually, They'd have something, but with the way the market is and origination is these days, it's been booming like crazy. I mean, I, I, I talk, here, here's the thing. I talked to a guy, head loan officer at Bank of America, Thursday or Friday, I think it was Friday. And what he told me they were doing as far as providing the, you know, the Fannie Mae down payment and like 7,500 towards closing costs, I'm like, that's ridiculous. And any stuff they get back off, they can cycle that off. To anybody else right now? So that's the thing you got to keep in mind. Mortgage bankers, while they're on the origination side, probably not the best thing to be doing these days. Now, we've talked about how it's been a good thing in the past, and it has been in the past. But right now, with it being like it is up to that crest, it's, it's going to turn, and you got to be prepared for that, but it's not worth wasting time. They're literally dumping and moving on, and people are buying their, their stuff because they want to get in the origination side. They want to get in that side. So it's, it's Reminds me of over a decade ago, the run up to 2006, seven and eight. We're in the midst of it right now, okay? And if you have questions, feel free to ask questions uh, while we're going through this. We'll try to jump in there and 
answer them as best as I can as we're rocking and rolling through this thing. All right, good to see some new names, some older names. Uh, let's go here. What is working in 2020? Well, what is working in 2020 are these things. And this is a different aspect of thing. And what's funny, I've some, seen some people commenting online lately. Like, oh my God, this is awesome. Like, oh my God, I shared that with you six months ago. Thank you for coming to the 21st century and start doing something, okay? Uh, now, yes, you cancel wholesale notes if it makes sense, okay? People, uh, people ask, can you wholesale a note? Yes, but it makes sense. What's the price? What are you expecting for commission? As things get more pricier, you have to expect to reduce your commission for leave plenty, most of the meat on the bone for the end buyer, okay? That's what you have to expect. If you don't, otherwise, um, you can't be expected, oh, I'm gonna get 20%. No, that's not the case. You may get a, a finder's fee for the most part, but it's gonna vary a little bit for you as a wholesaler. It all depends on how valuable that note is and the true deal. So you've got to work some numbers and know exactly what the heck you're trying to wholesale. Okay. So here's the thing that is still working to this day, and it's actually working more and more and more. And this is using LinkedIn to make connections and contact special asset managers, secondary marketing. I've talked about this before, but this is really working. LinkedIn is becoming much more visible. It's becoming much more used. And I'm seeing connections out the wazoo, uh, especially reaching out to whole loan sales desk, whole, whole, whole loan traders. We've had uh, some great stuff here in the last couple days. Uh, had a great coaching student in here Wednesday and Thursday. Bob did an amazing job. Uh, and he started setting up some things with his email blast we'll get to later, but also reached out on LinkedIn and he immediately had phone calls. He immediately had people responding to him, doing some great stuff. Um, yes, Will, I teach that. I teach people how to buy notes and make money on it, okay? Um, but using LinkedIn contact, now here's the big thing. I'm also a big believer that email blast to asset managers work, okay? Actually, let me share, um, I'll come, yeah, no, no, I'll share that later. Email blasts on a regular basis, not once a month, okay? We all know that 80% of sales are made after the fifth contact, the fifth contact. So if you're looking to buy notes and you wanna reach out to asset managers, you've gotta hit them up again and again and again. And if you wait once a month to do this, it's gonna take you between now and June for the majority of people to do anything, okay? So I think you need to bump it up on a couple of reasons. One, you need to do it more than once a month, okay? But I also think the biggest magic, here's the magic, okay? Here's the money. Is those that actually open your emails is to actually call them or just follow up with a personal email to those people. Now, if you send an email out to asset manager lists, and I've shown in the past how to do that, taking that list, uploading it to your CRM and sending out a professional email. And of course, you're gonna get somewhere between a 12 to 20% open rate, all right? And what I'm talking about is taking and going back in and looking at your email and at the 12 to 20% and, and pulling that list off and following up with those people, okay? Another thing that's working, we're seeing quite a bit is tracking assignment chains. Who bought, who sold to who, who bought from who, all right? Uh, we talked about this, if you go to a previous episode on Note Night in America on how, you know, 10 ways to find deals in the new year, we discussed that in heavy. Uh, here's another thing. We all have a network. We all have a network, whether it's Facebook groups or LinkedIn or Connect Investors. Just share with your group, your database of what you're looking for. Hey, anybody got some notes in North Carolina? That's my home state. Hey, anybody got any notes in Florida? That's my home state. Hey, anybody got any notes in outside of Crook County in Illinois, sharing what you're looking for, being more specific about it, all right? I think you need that's one of the great things about networking and, and is just sharing what you have and what you are truly looking for, not being a catch-all be-all. If you got a note, send to me. No, that's not what I do. But educating your network to make things happen, okay? One of the most important things I think a lot of people get bogged down and, and being broad and you need to be more specific. I also believe that if you're in a couple of different asset classes, you're gonna to have to wait a while before those assets come, asset classes come back. Primarily, second lien, junior lien investors. Most of the junior lien guys I know are, are coming to the first side or going into traditional real estate. And by traditional real estate, I mean the fix and flip, the rental side, 
the short term rentals, that kind of stuff, because they're not finding anything that makes sense for them, and or they're coming over to the first lead side. Okay. Um, so here, where do I focus first? If you're sitting there tonight and like, okay, Scott, this sounds great, but where do I focus first? What should I? Where are the steps that I should be doing? I only have so many hours a week. I can't pick up the phone and dial for dollar and call fifty to hundred people that I'm gonna be scared to death of, and I'm gonna end up screwing up on and uh, messing up on the call. So what you should do first, where do I focus first? If I were all of you, is LinkedIn. By 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 hands, oh, by by guarantee. LinkedIn, by all means, the free, you don't need an expensive version. Uh, LinkedIn, now some things about LinkedIn. I think you all can make roughly about 100 new connections per day. Now, if you got a brand new LinkedIn, it's not gonna allow you to do that many, I don't believe. But it's, you can make roughly, what I see is when we're reaching out and connecting, it's about 100 new connections before it won't let me add anymore. And I've got 18,000, okay? I'll go on my way to 19,000 connections. 100 new connections per day, okay? I am a huge fan of Octopus CRM. This can automate the connection and message. Now here's the thing. If you guys are working, all right, if you have a full-time J-O-B, this will work for you because that's the thing. Like, man, 100 connections? I can't copy paste that much. Well, you can if you set it up what you're going to say and copy paste it. Then all you got to do is change the hello, hello, John, hello, Mary, hello, Jeff, hello, Monica, whatever it might be, all right? Because you always want to do customization, copy paste, say hello, John, see who the ask manager's name is. When you're reaching out, be a direct message, okay? New connections, send a new message to a special asset manager, secondary marketing, okay? But Octopus CRM can automate the connection and message really easy. And I literally, um, let me share a, new, uh, share a new share here with you. I set this up. Um, this is one thing I, I absolutely love. It is a game changer. Why is it so kind of washed out? It's a game changer out here for everything in our business and I'm loving what's going on with it. Um, whew. Anyway, let me roll that back here. It's a little brighter in here, but anyway, there we go. So Octopus CRM, really great thing out there. Let me share this with you. Do I have it up and running here? I think I do. I think I do, I think I do. Oops, I had it over here early. Okay, so like right now, okay, I hope you guys can see my screen, okay. Right now I have it running in the background. And it is connecting with special asset managers for me automatically. And, you, and some of you may not be able to see it, but literally it's automated up here. Let me stop it here. So I set this up. I did a search and it allows for you to do a search like you would. So I type in special asset managers, secondary connections, secondary connections, and allows for me to pull a thousand names over from the search into Octopus CRM. So I've got a thousand people over here. I have 682 still left, okay? 682 left to connect with, all right? Uh, connected with 315 since Friday. Now, I've, I've done more of this before, whole variety. Thing. Like, I've got whole loan sales. I use this for whole loan sales, uh, third-degree podcast votes, uh, podcast votes real estate, um, special asset managers, virtual workshop contacts, whole loan sales. I do this for a variety of lists that I pull over, okay? And then I go in here and I customize it. Hello, first name. I wanted to check to see if you might be have or you might have any NPNs on your books that you're looking to move. This quarter I've been buying NPNs around portfolio since 2008. Would love to see what you have that might have some hair on it. Okay. Well, since Friday, it's done 315 and it's taking me less than five minutes to set this up. Okay. It did a hundred. Get this. It did a hundred from five to six o'clock. I had to go back in and start this up just a few minutes ago, but let's say, oh, let's say, let's add another 50 people at launch. Well, it's gonna go in here and add those 50 people, and the beautiful thing is gonna change it up and connect with them at different times, sometimes two seconds, sometimes 20 seconds, times 30, they switch it up. Now, when you hit that 100, 100 plus amount, they say, hey, too many invites for the day, you gotta wait a couple hours. The most I've been able to get through is about 180, uh, 190 in one day. But most of you can go in, Go to your office. If you got access to LinkedIn, you can pull CRM up like this, or even your office, do it before you leave the house in the morning. Okay? And it'll automatically get done. Wouldn't you love that? Then you log into LinkedIn and see people who've left messages to you. Okay? But the great thing, and I'm not going to go through because I've had some really good stuff happen. I've had some really good stuff happen since Friday. Uh, let me share my stuff on here. Is that with Octopus... 
uh, uh, they accept. We send a follow-up message through LinkedIn. Hey, thanks for connecting. Love to visit with you. Okay. 186 connections sent on Friday. That's how many I was able to get done Friday. Out of the 186, I've gotten one list of performing notes. All right, that I'm looking at. I've gotten one list of non-performing notes. Not the biggest list, about 20 non-performing, which I'm looking at. Uh, we're going back and forth on kind of the pricing model. And then I've gotten several one-off commercial notes from the 186 connections, which I think is a win, right, everybody? Yeah, woo! Let's get excited, everybody. Um, you know, oops, that was a bomb. Let's stay on here. Oh, what's wrong with my noisemaker? The noisemaker is not working. Wah. Anyway, but that's just come on an automation basis. And all those, those three things came from the first email, from the first thing through Octopus CRM. Now, Octopus CRM, you can use it for a variety of reasons. Like I use it not just for the note business. You could use it to find real estate investors. You could use it to find note investors. You could type in note investor Alabama and post that in there and see if they've got note investor in their profile name and they're from Alabama, it'll help you customize that. Wink, wink, hint, hint. Hopefully you're seeing these things. Looking for, hey, I'm looking for deals in Alabama. If you've got anything available, I'd love to talk with you. I'm looking for deals in Florida. I see you're in Florida. If you've got anything, I'd love to talk with you. This is a great way to do this, to talk with 100 to 200 people in a day. E, an easy way to do it. And, and Octopus is so inexpensive. You, it's much cheaper than hiring a VA. You can still go on and add, copy, paste, add things via your phone if you want to be cheap. But let's get smart about it. Let's get smart and effective with our time. And those that actually connect on it, you'll see, oh, they popped up. They looked at your profile. They connect, accepted your connection. Those we follow up with, hey, thanks for accepting our connection. Just wanted to follow back up. Love to schedule a time to talk. Okay. Now, where would I focus second? All right. Yes. All right. Where would I focus second? We got to change that. Uh, I would jump on email. It's all about the numbers. Whatever you best you can do numbers wise to the masses here and speed it up or replicate this be much more effective for you. Email blast. Everybody in here, if you have less than 25,000 connections, should have a MailChimp account. MailChimp is easy to do. You can do some amazing things with it. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to be sending out to asset managers, and we've talked about this before, hey, send it the first week of the month, I would bump that up. Instead of just monthly, I would bump it up to bi-monthly. What you want to do is as you want to increase your marketing as the market gets tighter. If you're having a hard time finding deals, you know what you need to do? Not quit marketing. You need to double down, okay? You need to start doing more to find more, okay? Same thing. Send an email blast. If you send it out to a 1,000 asset managers, you pull the list either from the Texas Mortgage Savings Departments, You've jumped on LinkedIn and Harvest Yourself or you've just got lists from other things. Follow up with those that open the email. Now, I mean by that, if you send an email blast out to your 1,000 asset managers and 10% open them, that means you have 100 people that actually opened the email. Now, MailChimp will tell you who opened it once, who opened it twice, who opened it three times, four times, that kind of stuff. Re-rank your list of opens to see who opened it more than once. And those are the first people you should reach out to with a separate email. Hey, just wanted to touch base. Hey, saw that you opened my email, just wanted to follow up. Do you have anything? Can we get on the phone to talk? Love to share, okay? Uh, if the emails bounce, I think the email bounces are an opportunity as well for you. Why is that? Well, you can still call the company and say, oh, hey, I just sent an email to John Smith over here at ABC Funding. His email, email bounced back. Who is now in charge of special assets? That's who, John is who I talked with. He's left. That's a warm name drop, even though you never probably have talked to John. But I'm amazed that probably 80% of you watching this live, watching this online, or watching the replay haven't sent an email out to your database or your list of contacts in the last six months at least. Why? Because that's human nature. Most of you aren't going to do anything at all. <laughs> it just is what it is. Okay? And then finally... The emails, I would just dial for dollars. Pick up the phone and call the people. If they emailed you and they, if they connected with you on LinkedIn or if they open your email and you track their phone number down either on their LinkedIn profile, a lot of them will have their cell phone because they may have moved or jumping on laneguide.com and looking for the corporate office and then name dropping. Hey, I, I, I'm looking for John Smith 
a secondary marketing. Now that you have an email address, now you can talk to somebody, okay? But those are the biggest things that I would look at doing. Oh man, okay. Um, another thing that would be bonus, I would be going to large mortgage banking events, okay? Statewide, like in Texas, we have the Texas Mortgage Bankers Association. They meet once a year. Um, I would go to that here in, in, in Texas. It may be Dallas, it might be Houston. If it's in a state, go to the one year in a state. They have regional ones like the Western Secondary Marketing Convention. This happens in San Francisco um, last year. Okay, I actually it happened there the last couple of years. I think uh, it's a great event to go to. You know, you have 400, 500 people. The Texas Mortgage Bank Association and the Western Second Mortgage, uh, you probably have 300 to 500 people at. It's a great way to meet some people, okay? Uh, the National Convention that was held here in Austin for the National MBA, I was actually out of town for this with some other things. But I spoke with my buddy, my boy, Cody Cox. You might be familiar with him. He works for the state of Oregon for their veteran affairs, but also a note investor. He went, talked with people. He just pressed the flesh, found two note sources, all right? You have to realize these are the decision makers. These are the people up a step from your regular, let's just go to the distressed mortgage expo. Eh, I don't want to talk to the same 50 people that have been showing up or hear the same four speakers that have spoken six years straight, okay? Servicing conferences will often have them as well. And that might be a state Texas servicing convention or say Florida servicing convention. I wouldn't actually go to the IMN convention. I said, somebody's asked me about, hey, should I go to IMN? I'm like, no, nah, why pay for an overpriced ticket to a, a something that's just gonna be panels all day? I don't think it's worth going to. I think it's better going directly to the events that fewer people are going to, okay? Uh, the thing is about these things, you know, whether it's Texas Mortgage, Western Secondary, or the National MBA, it's gonna be more of an expensive ticket than a, a $75 or a free ticket to DME or INS or Noteworthy or, Note Expo or whatever, It'd be more expensive, but more quality, okay? So maybe if you can't afford a ticket, but in your backyard, dress the part, go in a suit, you know, go in a sports coat, dress like you belong, dress the part, hang out, network. Uh, oftentimes you'll get a flyer there. You can walk up and grab a flyer. It'll give you a vendor. Sometimes they'll tell you who's actually there. Connect with the vendors. If it's in a hallway, get to talk of the hallway. Maybe a lot of times you can walk through without having to pay in the second day you're walking in for free. So connect with the vendors. The vendors are one of the most valuable aspects because they can direct you to what you're looking for. Hey, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for product here. Vendors at these events often know more people there than you will. Actually, hopefully they should. But anyway, that's an opportunity for you, guy. You know, all this is great. All this is great, but you've got to, sm you've got to pass the smell test, okay? You got to have a 100% complete LinkedIn profile. If it still says, it's still prompting you to fill in your photo or to fill in your education, you have failed, okay? Totally failed. You need a CRM tool that you use on a regular basis. So spend some time on your email templates. Make sure it looks good. Make sure you've got your logo, your company looks good. Make sure you got a good photo of yourself, okay? Don't throw your social media profiles up at the top. Leave them down at the bottom or leave them off. Okay, except to your LinkedIn for the most part or your website. Keep it simple, all right? Keep it simple. We had somebody on uh, who was talking about how they sent email after email to asset managers and they never got anybody to call back. And then when they sent me their template, they have their logo, all their social media, and you see no content, all right? No content whatsoever. So make sure that your logo is a thinner horizontal logo, not one that's freaking huge. You want to make it look good like a banner ad, okay? Yes, in today's world, you got to have, uh, you've got to have uh, a website. You've got to have a website that's complete and, and doing some good things out there, everybody. It's just what it is. And, and you can't have, oh, it's a Wix website. At least have something on there. You know what to do on your website? Put about you, who you are. Put your face. I see website for website. And I get emails like, who is this? Who is this? Who are these people? Put your, about you, talk a little about you and dress the part. If you're wearing a dirty t-shirt in your profile photo, fail. If you're looking disheveled, get rid of the uh, junior high hoodie, okay? Fail. Look decent, okay? Act the part. Business cards, oh my God. Go to freaking FedEx office, Vistaprint, in order to use some business cards. Same thing, decent looking logo, 
your photo because people aren't going to remember you from Adam. And if it's a cheap, shitty looking business card, they're going to think you're a cheap, shitty business person. Okay. So some decent business cards. If you remember the thing from American Psycho, like, oh my God, this is such a great, oh my God. You want to have something that impresses. It's still a business, a handshake business a lot of times at these relationships. And that's why, hey, if you're talking to somebody, hey, let me get your card. If you run out of cards, take a picture of a card and text it to them. Okay. Easy to do. Spend time on LinkedIn. Forget fake book. Okay. Oh, I come home and it's like, Hey, do you see all this stuff that happened on Facebook? I'm like, no, because <laughs> that's not where the asset managers are spending their time at. Asset managers are spending their time on LinkedIn. Actually, a lot of companies are banning Facebook because it's such a uh, activity suck. Okay. But they're approving LinkedIn for business purposes. So forget Facebook, spend more time on LinkedIn, upload articles, share some stuff there, okay? Be posting and marketing on a regular basis, regularly. I'm talking about 20 times a day, I'm talking at least once a day. But if you get in a habit, and what I have found since we post on a regular basis is we find asset managers will go back and like stuff. They'll look at what you're looking, they'll look at your profile. The more that you have on there about something to do with real estate or marketing or whatever your focus is, Boom, that leads to easier, more connections taking place. Uh, and the easiest thing, there's basically three things you could be doing very easily on LinkedIn. You could get it, you could get an inbox, you could go to DS News, Housing Wire, like something on there, copy the link and share it on over. Hey, found this article interesting. If you need to, they start doing some short 10 minute videos on there. Hey, I'm working on a deal today. Hey. I uh, just saw this article on uh, Housing Wire. Here's what it means to me. We're not talking long, but LinkedIn has this, a really valuable video aspect to it, and they'll accept 10-minute videos or less. So start using that. Okay, upload 10 minutes at a time. Here's my most recent deal I'm working on. Here's another deal I'm working on. Hey, Florida investors, if you've got any notes in Florida, I'd love to talk with you. Okay? Now, here's the thing that a lot of people are like, oh, my God, are you sure the banks are going to talk to me when I haven't pulled the trigger on a bunch of deals? And the answer is to yes. If, 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 if you look the part, if you got the website, if you got a full LinkedIn profile, it's great, but I don't have a lot of deals. Okay. You don't have a lot of deals to talk about. Let's rely on your team. Let's rely on your team. Lean on your team a little bit of vendors, your, your past experience. Talk about your servicer. Have their LinkedIn website up on your website. Your attorneys put their logo and a link to their website as well. Do a short 10 minute interview with them, okay? Your vendors, tools. You could literally go to an event and do a 10 minute video with each vendor and that would be something you could post. Hey, here's a little bit about my, my vendor. Shante, here's my servicer, Shante Duffy at Madison Management and why she's so awesome. If there's a website or a tool that you use like Batch Geo or uh, uh, Runometer, you could do a, a link to those. Hey, here's a couple things that we like for our due diligence aspect of things, okay? Your insurance team, hey, here's a link to Ross Diversified Insurance. Ed Bobkiss and his brothers over there gonna do a great job and take good care of you. Your team, talk about your assistant. Talk about your VA if you don't have an assistant, okay? Talk about your team so it looks bigger than you. Think about this, Henry Ford was not the guy putting the wheels on the vehicles. He was a guy up in charge. And if somebody needed to come to his office, he didn't know the answer. He said, hang on, I'll get somebody here who can answer that. That's what you have to start thinking of. Hey, let me call my servicer. Let me call my attorneys. Let me call my realtors. That was who I was missing off of this. Okay? Share your past real estate deals. I don't care if you wholesaled a property five years ago. Talk about that deal. I don't care if you had a rental. I don't care if you bought your first piece of property as a place you lived in. Talk about it. Share a picture. Our first deal ever. You don't have to give the numbers on it. Okay, share your past real estate experience the very least and post that to LinkedIn, okay? And the more experience that you share on there, the greater your confidence level, not only in your businesses, but the greater confidence level the asset managers are gonna have with you, okay? They're gonna have great confidence in you because they start seeing, oh, hey, this guy and gal is look like they're passing the smell test, okay? And based on what they're sharing online, they pass the eye test. You have to get beyond it. it's all about you, what you can do. You can use these tools. You can use the things. If all you did was reach out on LinkedIn, 
and emails, you would find deals as long as you do it on a regular basis. What is sad is most people aren't doing that. And I'm scared to run a poll to see who's on here who's done it. Because I know most of you haven't done it. And that's fine. I'm just sitting here, blah, 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 talking out to the interwebs out there. And for those that are watching the replay, if you do this great comment, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Okay? So, but that's what I have for you all tonight. Any questions about those things, how we dive into it? Hey, should we go back and take a look here real fast? Hang on here. Let's take a look at and, and look and see how far Octopus has gotten for me. Oh, look, too many requests today. So I'm up to 348 since last Friday. That's not too shabby. All without me having to do much of anything else. Now, yeah, some of these people um, won't will fall in the wrong spot. I've had a few people like, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. I do this. They, for some reason, had whole loan sales in their thing. That's okay. That's quite all right. But I would, if all I get is one contact for every hundred I did, it's worth it. Because that one contact has a list, has a deal. And so that way, that's the way I look at it. If I do a hundred of these and I get one contact who gives me a referral, a list, um, a deal, that's one person I didn't know that had deals. That's one person that goes in my Rolodex to reach out to Rolodex, who has a Rolodex these days, but goes into my database on my hot list to reach out to, okay? That's an important value, okay? So what does it cost and do they have good support, life support? Uh, go to it here, okay. Yeah, they've got great support, okay? Uh, what does it cost? It's cheap. Oh, billion here. What do I pay monthly for this thing? Oh, yeah. I pay $14.99 a month, 15 bucks. Less than 50 cents a day to do this. But you, if you're not, you, you, if you're not gonna do it, if you haven't done this, then go spend some time sending some contacts first. Because I see so many people that, oh yeah, I got contacts and all that. And I don't, I'm not getting paid by anything. I just know how awesome this tool is. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. That's why I'm talking about it. Because it works, okay? It totally works. Questions, comments, concerns. We do, people have been asking me, when are our next events? When's our next workshops? Well, you guys are working on now. Um, when's our next coaching? Well, look, guys, uh, for those that maybe missed the latter part of the year, we've changed how we do our coaching now a little bit. Instead of doing on the weekends, uh, as a group, we're letting you come in and pick two days during the week, Monday through Saturday. We don't, we're no longer working on Sunday anymore. Two days, come in, spend two days one-on-one -on -one with me. Oh, my gosh, I guarantee you I'll kick your ass in a good way. I'll put your business way into gear in two days. You can pick a Monday, Tuesday. I would prefer it to be not Monday, but anyway, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Wednesday, Thursdays, Thursday, Fridays, Friday, Saturdays. Pick two days, come on in and spend two days with me. It's 10 grand. Come in, you get lists, you get some great stuff. 10,000 bucks. It's well worth it because trust me, the database and the fact, let me give you an example here. Uh, the student that was in here last week, he's got uh, 15 notes that he is working on right now. Uh, 15 performing notes, but he looks like he's going to pick up at around 60 cents of UPB, and there's some value above those, okay? 22% yield on those, pretty decent stuff. Last guy uh, has bought, is closed on his fifth note in his first five weeks, okay? Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Yes, Robert says. Yes, Raphael said. Well worth it. Both of them will say it. Uh, all our previous coaching series will tell you that as well, too, is we, we stand by it, we kick your butt, we find deals, and we focus more intently on what you need to accomplish or what you need to focus on and what your schedule is. Not everybody has 40 hours we can put in the note business. So love to talk with you. You're interested, drop me an email, scott at weclosenotes.com. We'll talk about it, see if it's a fit for you. Some people, it's not a fit. Some people, you need to get more nuts and bolts. Uh, Laura Blunk says, yes, yes. Laura says, ah, thank you, Laura. Appreciate it. But uh, for those that we do have some, uh, I, I want to throw these out there. Our upcoming event calendar is as follows here for the year so far right now. I uh, don't have a date down for note camp period. We're still figure, finalizing that. But we do have the three dates for our virtual note buying workshop. This is our nuts and bolts training. It's live. It's live streamed online. Uh, virtual note buying workshops. You can go by the home, We Close Notes home site and click on there. It's $6.99. It includes you plus a spouse or a business partner. 
And we've got three dates on the books right now. May 1st will be the first one, uh, July 31st through August 2nd, the second one, and November 20th through the 22nd. That's the third one. So we're only going to be doing three probably this year, uh, virtual workshops. The reason we're just doing three is because we're doing something new. Um, after looking at the market and seeing where people are at and realizing, hey, I need to get a little more information. I'm going back to what I used to do a couple of years ago. When I go out and speak at a, a RIA club on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, we'd often sometimes have a follow-up Saturday workshop. So what we're doing now, um, I think eight times this year, we decided to, to set aside one weekend and do a note weekend with you guys. A Friday, a Saturday, Sunday. Actually, it's really just a Saturday with a replay of Saturday session on Sunday. The so one day Saturday event is kind of note basics. Um, I call mini workshops. Um, I, I'm pretty excited about these because I think it's going to be a, a big bang for a lot of people, help a lot of people get a little bit more information absorbed. It's also a, a price point is really desirable to help people really kind of, okay, I, I, this, is where, this is where I want to go. I will be live streaming the event Saturdays. I'm taking the replays and restreaming them on Sunday. So in case you can't make it on Saturday, you can watch on Sunday. It's 99 bucks. That includes the replays. We'll run 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Basically, it's an eight-hour day with about a half-hour lunch, you know, brown bag lunch in the middle. Uh, so three and a half hours, half-hour break, three and a half hours. So roughly about six sessions each. Um, covering quite a bit of stuff there. Uh, you can go to noteweekend.com and get signed up for that. For that. But here's the dates that were covered. February 29th, so the end of this month, Saturday we'll be doing. Okay? March 28th it be the next one, May 30th. Uh, then we're taking June and July off. Obviously, July, we have a workshop. Um, but August 29th, September 26th, and October 31st is what we have on the schedule right now. So uh, one, two, three, four, seven of these dates uh, available. If you miss one, you can jump on the next one. Um, WCN crew members, guess what? You get this comp in for you. As a WCN crew pet member, it's included as an added benefit and bonus for you guys being a monthly WCN membership members. But for those that aren't, hey, $99 uh, for the day. Great. We'll cover note basics, how to find deals, how to make money in wholesaling these deals, how to uh, do some quick due diligence on them. We'll have a couple collateral files that you can take a look at and dive in and break down that we'll be emailing out uh, a manual for it as well. Hand. Uh, so you can kind of go through and work through it with me, helping you identify numbers. Uh, talking about marketing, some basic things you can do marketing-wise, step-by-step step to really help you take your business to the next level. So another thing we're doing too is that, hey, come through one of our note weekends. Like I said, sit through Saturday. Uh, that $99 can be applied to either a virtual note buying workshop or also applied to our note buying blueprint, which is, includes our online home study course and a ticket to virtual. So uh, pretty excited about this. We've been, I've been thinking about this. Um, you know, this would be a, a way, I think, for us to connect with more people and also make it a little bit easier for those that are out there that can't jump on a plane and maybe a little bit tight budget-wise into doing anything. We can find something in the, in the middle aspect of things. So it gives you a great way to start. Um, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Questions, comments, concerns for anybody? Oh, it, this is not a pitch fest. I'll tell you that right now. We might have, might have one or two guests total on one of those. So it'll be mostly me at least 75% of the time, unless we focus on one little speck, uh, speck of something out there for you guys. So any questions, concerns, comments from you guys before we let you guys go for the evening? Cause that's about all that I have. I guess that's it. So once again, everybody, thank you so much for coming in and spending uh, Monday night with me here at Note Night in America. Uh, next Monday night, you're going to like it. We're going to have some cool stuff next Monday night. So got two or three people that we're going to have as a guest on. Uh, one of them just trying to finalize time for you. Thanks, Colleen. Appreciate it. Once again, guys, if you're interested in the Note Weekend, you can go and sign up for noteweekend.com. We'll take you straight to the checkout. 99 bucks. And uh, they'll get you a ticket and we'll get a, the manual out to you um, in the next day or so. Otherwise, have a great evening and uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye. Oh, we got a question here. Thanks, Laura. You too.